Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz and today we're waking up to a severe weather warning current for parts of Western Australia and the lower west region just around Perth. Hazardous storms are moving through the area at this time, making driving conditions relatively unsafe, that's for sure. And um, we've got more of these heavy showers coming through throughout the course of today. Also in other weather news, we've got some significant weather uh, inbound for New South Wales and Queensland with a possible east coast low set to develop later on this week. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Your support would be greatly appreciated. And let's get started straight into it. But well, we're going to start things off with Queensland and New South Wales. Nothing too crazy going on right now. You might actually be able to notice the wind observations through New Zealand at this time. Uh, they've had a nasty storm, storm blow through there, but thankfully very uh, minimal impacts on the Australian front of things, um, apart from the fact that that low pressure area did impact Australia once. But we're talking about the East Coast, uh, not for today or not for the next couple of days, but for more sort of this weekend. So as you can see on the satellite imagery um, at the start of the video and also on the rainfall forecast here, there's a bit of rainfall streaming in through the northern parts of the nation. Now, this is important because it is the precursor energy to what's going to be coming through New South Wales and Queensland in about three or four days' time. So the low pressure front, the actual cold front itself, tracks across Australia, but it's helped out massively by the ball of moisture that's going to be moving across the Kimberley and into the Northern Territory throughout the course of today and into tomorrow. And you can see it is a strong front. Victoria and Tasmania expecting some good rainfall from Thursday night into Friday morning and also some good rainfall um expected to continue through New South Wales into the agricultural regions and also into the agricultural regions of Queensland too, but not as much rainfall is expected there. Now, once we get in towards Friday and Saturday, this is where the rainfall really does start to pick up for areas just offshore. The eastern wave yesterday was expecting an east coast low to develop sometime on Saturday. They have pushed it back to Sunday. Now, I wouldn't call this a full-blown east coast low, but you can see as it develops here uh, with the big uh, frontal system streaming down here, oh, sorry about that, uh, streaming down here south of Queensland or just offshore from Queensland and then the low pressure area tying itself up offshore from Sydney and Newcastle, uh, you can see that this is an east coast low or very um, typical of east coast lows in how that they are forming. And I know what you're thinking, an east coast low in early June, what is he talking about? Well, yeah, it does happen. And um, just to prove the point, the sea surface temperatures are actually really warm down here, 22, 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, east, east coast lows need 20 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures. So they're there is more than enough fuel for a strong system to develop down here. And that does look like what's going to be happening. Um, in short, a lot of rainfall is possible for locations south of Sydney from this system later on this weekend and into Monday and the early parts of next week. Also, some very gusty winds can be expected. As with all East Coast lows, the winds will be very strong on the coast and also quite strong into the mountainous areas as well. You can see around Bathurst and Orange, we're looking at wind gusts here of around 70 kilometres an hour as an average. And so they will be a little bit stronger in more elevated or more more exposed locations. We're also talking about really strong wind gusts around the core of this system, at least 90, maybe up towards 100 kilometers an hour. Um, they don't get too strong. This certainly isn't a very strong East Coast low if it was to be classified as one, but it certainly is a good low pressure area uh, that has formed off uh, the um, New South Wales coast and will be providing a little bit of uh, severe weather here and there on Monday, I would say, and maybe Tuesday as well. Even the northern parts of Tasmania expecting some good winds out of this system, but maybe nothing too crazy in terms of rainfall, only about 25, maybe 30 millimetres of much needed rainfall, mind you, on Monday. And some much needed rainfall, maybe 30 millimetres of it as well on the Victorian coastline and up towards 50 or 60 millimetres on the New South Wales coastline. So nothing crazy, nothing absolutely obscene from uh, what East Coast lows can dump, but still strong winds um, and that heavy rainfall on Monday could provide for some pretty violent weather. And on the back end of this system as well, later on into next week, some good rainfall seems to sweep up the New South Wales coastline as well. But that is uh, a very interesting forecast by the looks of things in terms of rainfall accumulation before we talk about snowfall and wave heights. Uh, as this frontal system approaches the coastline, we're going to be talking about up to 25 or 30 millimetres in the agricultural regions of New South Wales. A very widespread fall of at least 20 millimetres looks to be on the cards. Um, just outside of the Capital Territory, looks like the rainfall will be a little bit heavier, up to 40 millimetres. This part of Victoria and New South Wales that I'm circling right now, just outside of all 
Mulberry and Griffith is very much under some extreme drought conditions right now and the rainfall is much needed. Uh, 50 millimetres of steady falling rainfall or even heavy rainfall is necessary down here in Victoria and New South Wales because they are under exceptional drought conditions to the likes of which they have not seen in a couple of years. Unfortunately as well it looks like South Australia misses out on the rainfall at least in the next three days and it looks like they're going to miss out on it for the rest of the forecast as well. Um, down on the Air Peninsula not too much rainfall expected there only about 15 millimetres then again any rainfall is good rainfall at this time. So this East Coast low system, it will actually dump a pretty healthy amount of rainfall on the New South Wales coastline, but everywhere else seems to really miss out on the worst of the rainfall, which I guess is good news, but in Tasmania and Victoria, where they're desperate for rainfall, any amount of rainfall will be welcome. But in terms of peak rainfall accumulations, they will, as I said, be concentrated around Wollongong, Sydney, Newcastle, that sort of area, the usual location, where up to 200 millimetres is possible from this weather system. The majority of it will be falling on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I would say, Sunday and Monday are going to be the wettest days and driving conditions on Monday morning to work are going to be hazardous in the Sydney area so take extreme care on the roads but the rainfall is not going to be unique just to Sydney it'll extend right down the coastline through Badman's Bay down to Naruma where up to 150 millimetres is possible and up to 200 millimetres possible in some locations as well out to see those where of course the worst the rainfall will be it is reciprocated amongst the other forecast models to the GFS expecting a healthy amount of rainfall on the New South Wales coastline and the access G3 as well, expecting a very good amount of rainfall there, which means that you can say with a high degree of certainty that this is a certainty on the forecast. It's going to happen. It is kind of just a matter of timing right now and what areas get the worst impacts. We're going to be focusing on this system a lot more on Thursday and Friday when the weather starts to die down a little bit in Western Australia. I'll get to that in just a few minutes. But just to wrap things up here, wave heights as well, they're not as much of a threat as what I was expecting um, in yesterday's forecast. I mean, peak wave heights still very high, up to five metres um, offshore from Batemans Bay, Jervis Bay, that sort of region, but five metres is, uh, dare I say, piddly in the face of some East Coast lows. They can fire out some massive waves, seven or eight metres high, but still the threat of coastal erosion is going to be quite high. Boating is an absolute no-go. Surfing and any ocean-based activity fishing is an absolute no-go this weekend and into early next week, probably until about Monday afternoon if you live in the Sydney area, but at least Tuesday or Wednesday if you live in a more exposed area down in southern New South Wales or on Tasmania, it should be an it should be completely unconsidered at this point because um, the waves are just going to be so extremely high and winds as well are going to be very high as well. And like we touched on just a few minutes ago, the conditions are primed for an east coast low here. The water temperatures are basically tropical. I mean, 23, 24 degrees Celsius as you get further up into the northern parts of New South Wales. Very, very warm. They're at the warmest that they normally are this year. And east coast lows, they can be uncommon in May and June, but they do happen and it looks like one is going to be happening this year. So make sure you are prepared. I imagine the severe weather warnings that are going to come out are going to cover all of the necessary information, but here is just a heads up a couple of days before bomb swoops all over it. In terms of other interesting weather around the northern parts of Australia, we do have some uh, good rainfall on the cards for parts of the Northern Territory and Western Australia. The majority of that will be falling throughout the course of today, actually. There's some good rainfall now starting just offshore from Broome up to 50 millimetres of the sort has already fallen in some locations, and it looks like that rainfall will continue on its march through the Northern Territory and then in towards South Australia and at New South Wales. And it looks like Queensland might also get a little bit of rainfall as well. In terms of rainfall in the tropical zones, it looks like wet season 2024 is well and truly over. The GFS still calling for that uh, trough to extend itself along the Queensland coastline. I'm not sold on that considering the GFS is the only forecast model that's been calling for it. If it does become a, pro a, pro a probability where we're looking at 200 millimetres of rainfall between Rockhampton and Cairns along the Queensland coast, which the GFS is expecting, at uh, this time, then I will be covering it more in depth in a future forecast update. But at this time, I just don't see it as a high chance, and that's why I'm not giving it the time of day. Um, and yeah, rainfall up in far north Queensland is starting to ease off, and our soil moisture is just starting to dry out up there now. Around Cairns, they're sitting at around 70%, which is much healthier than 100%. And if 200 millimetres was to fall up there, then it 
isn't the end of the world. I tell you what, is expecting some very moist soils now is the Perth metro area, which leads us very nicely into the next part of our video, which is the Western Australia cold front situation. I don't want to call it an emergency, but this is certainly uh, some of the strongest cold fronts that we will, we will receive this year. And if you're hoping for some dry weather to hang the washing out or go for a walk today, I don't think it's going to be the case until later on this evening with Perth. All of these speckles through here, that is cloud activity, and that still has to make it through Western Australia until the conditions start to ease off which they will likely ease off a little bit later tonight. Uh, the winds will definitely die down, the rainfall will thin out, but at this time there are some thick clouds moving through and there is a lot of rainfall still yet to fall. My gauge has picked up 60 millimetres overnight. Please let me know how much rainfall you have picked up overnight as well if you live in the Perth metro area. 60 millimetres is our highest, highest rather daily accumulation since I believe July of 2023. So it's been nearly a year and it looks like there is an awful lot more rainfall on the way. And let's break that down right now. Throughout the course of today, those showers and storms will continue until about 3 or 4 p.m. when they should start to ease off for the evening commute home. Once again, make sure you're taking extreme care on those roads. They will be dangerous. A little bit of hail is just starting to fall here today, and that's why the background audio has picked up a lot. I do apologize. There's nothing I can do about the weather, unfortunately. Um, it looks like Thursday we're going to get a little secondary band of rainfall coming through funneled up by this high pressure system which means if you're hoping for some dry weather Thursday to get a little bit of washing done it certainly isn't going to happen. It looks like Thursday evening might be a little bit wet and then into Friday morning as well a couple of showers here and there but those conditions are going to warm up significantly. Those winds are going to sp uh, swing around to the northwest and pick up dramatically and that is ahead of this cold front here which doesn't look awfully strong. The forecast models have definitely weakened it off a little bit but this one here is going to be packing the most punch out of all of the fronts that we have had taking it right through and towards Saturday afternoon. If you do want to get some washing out or go for a nice walk, it looks like Friday evening or afternoon is your best bet and also Saturday in the mid-morning to the early afternoon also your best bet for a bit of a walk but I'd stick away from anywhere close to the coast because it will be very windy and quite uncomfortable there but it looks like Saturday night this massive cold front comes through, crosses the coast around 9 to 10pm and the rainfall is quite heavy that's for sure. We're probably going to be seeing 50 mm of rainfall Saturday night and a further 40 millimeters of rainfall Sunday morning from the showers that are going to come through behind it. They will be at their worst at around 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning for the Perth metro area and a little bit earlier on for the south coastal regions around Albany and they will extend as far north as Denham and Shark Bay by the looks of things, maybe even as far north as Carnarvon where we're going to be seeing showers and storms. This is a massive cold front and the low pressure system is very, very strong. The engine behind this is very, very strong and you can see these showers extend right in towards Sunday evening when they will start to ease off thankfully it looks like a couple of dry conditions for the uh, start of the next week uh, for Monday that is WA day so you might be able to get out and celebrate WA day Monday under some fine conditions a couple of clouds here and there maybe some showers along the coastline but conditions will be a lot less wild than what they are today or what they're going to be this weekend and the other great piece of news here is if we take a look at rainfall accumulation big rainfall accumulations are expected inland in Western Australia up to 40 millimeters possible for parts of the Nullarbor, which again, they don't really need that rainfall because they have had such a huge amount this year, but that 40 millimetres is very welcome in the gold fields and also into the wheat belt where more rainfall is actually expected than yesterday. I mean, taking a look at this, if you live towards the, I believe it's the west of Albany Highway or the Southwest Highway, you're going to be looking at at least 50 millimetres of rainfall. This is very healthy, ra healthy rainfall accumulations. York expecting 45 millimetres, Beverly expecting about 50 millimetres, same with Brookton. Wandering, which has been extremely unlucky, uh, unlucky, they picked up less than half a millimetre last night. They're expecting a healthy 60 millimetres. They don't want to miss out on the rainfall, that's for sure. And even inland communities as far in as Hyden, Meriden, Southern Cross even, expecting up to 20 millimetres of rainfall. So fantastic news on the forecast for farmers concerned about the fact that it has been extremely dry as some more hail falls in my area. So now taking a look at the uh, rainfall down in the south coastal region, up to 200 millimetres expected. Albany looks like it's going to miss out on the worst bit, 60 or 70 millimetres there. But as you get close to Walpole and Pemberton, up to 200 millimetres there. Outside of Margaret River, about 180 millimetres. Then even up in towards the Perth metro area. The southern suburbs will cop it the most, and suburbs adjacent to the Darling Ranges will also cop it the most. We're going to be talking at least 130 millimetres there. The, about 100 of that will be Saturday night, Sunday morning, and then big rainfall accumulation 
Russians as you get up towards Ellenbrook, up to 140 millimetres there, and even as far north as June, up 130 millimetres, and those 100 millimetre accumulations will likely extend as far north as Cervantes or Durian Bay, Geraldton a healthy 60 millimetres, Calbarri a healthy 50 millimetres, and Shark Bay expecting at least 25 or 30 millimetres of rainfall there. This is just fantastic news on the forecast, and I'm very, very glad to see it, that's for sure. Unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing that dry weather for long. It looks like next Thursday and Friday, another monster cold front comes through. We're going to touch on the winds on both these fronts in just a second, but just take a look at the rainfall coming through on this cold front here. A further 30 millimetres, more than likely uh, Thursday night into Friday morning. Hopefully it clears up for the weekend. It does look like that's going to be the case, but a little bit more violent weather. Certainly not going to be welcome after this round of violent weather. But yeah, let's draw it right back. We're going to now talk about wind speeds. In terms of peak wind gusts right now, we do have that severe weather warning coming for the Perth metro area. Damaging winds expected with wind gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour possible. But yeah, winds just refusing to pick up at this time, but they will be picking up this weekend. I mean, take a look at wind gusts on Saturday night. We're going to be talking about winds up towards 80 or 90 kilometers an hour uh, sustained with the passage of this strong cold front and possibly a little bit stronger Sunday morning in its shower pool. But the worst of the winds will actually be between Durian Bay and Geraldton because that's where the shower pool is going to be swinging itself up from the south into. And as a result, the wave heights are going to be extremely through that area Sunday uh, morning and into Sunday afternoon. We'll be talking about wave heights up towards five or six metres, even seven metres as you get up towards the Abrolhos Islands. Thankfully, it looks like those waves do actually give Perth, uh, or at least the Perth local waters, a miss. They'll still be about six metres offshore from Rottnest Island, but up towards Lancelin, they will be significantly higher, and it looks like the Perth Coastal Bridge and, uh, dodges a bullet with only two or three metre high waves. And Perth is reasonably protected by Rottnest, Karnak, and Garden Islands. However, uh, these big waves they always find a way to penetrate themselves through them the south coastal region as well expecting some massive wave heights throughout the course of sunday uh, up towards four or five meters expected there but again it looks like this front it's not going to be big enough or it's not going to be small enough actually to really give the south coastal region a problem it's going to be so big it's going to swing itself up further north and it's going to be locations between mandra up towards geraldton that received the worst of the impacts here which is an interesting thing to have on the forecast that's for sure but that's how some of these cold fronts can work that is a very long-winded forecast on Western Australia alone and around Australia as a whole. We've got some very interesting weather happening and it is important that we hammer out all of the details. But I'd also like to talk about what's in our local backyard. Well, we have a tropical cyclone trying to develop. You can see it right here. And on the forecast models, the GFS model, which is a fairly reliable model, especially for tropical cyclone activity, is calling for formation sometime early next week, at least into a tropical depression, maybe into a very weak tropical storm next Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday as it approaches the Seychelles Islands and the northern parts of Madagascar. Now, this is very, very far away. It's comically far away from Australia. I mean, you can see it here, and it is about... Or a rough guess, maybe about 5,000 nautical miles away on the complete other side of the Indian Ocean. So why am I talking about it? Well, it's just interesting to know what is going on in our backyard. And sometimes these systems, even as the far away as they are, they can have impacts on the Australian climate and the Australian weather happenings. In this case, they're not, uh, but they can impact the Madden Julian Oscillation, which is why in the uh, tropical seasons, especially around February and March, I take extreme uh, vigilance in tropical cyclones up in the southwest Indian Ocean, because it can be a great forecast in what's actually going to happen in Australia in just a couple of days time but in this case here yeah, no impacts expected on Australia no change in the forecast also expected for the Australian mainland and in other tropical cyclone news we do have Typhoon Ewanair up here which is approaching Japan at this time it's a pretty messy ugly looking system it did really well a couple of days ago uh, as it was moving through the Philippines to intensify but at this time it's looking like the ugly duckling of what it once was and certainly not a concern um, or not a major concern to land at this time except a little bit of rainfall is expected up there. But zooming right back to Australia to finish off this video, thank you so much for your company this morning. It has been greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Thank you so much for 15,000 subscribers. The support is much appreciated and I couldn't be running this show without you guys or the channel sponsors either. Their names are on screen right now. Their support is greatly appreciated. They're the reason why I have access to all of this fancy software that gives great forecasting information out to you guys, the viewers. But that is all for me, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.